Hello everyone and welcome to the August um, Council meeting. Um, thanks everyone for coming. Um, if we could all please stand for the opening prayer and the custodian statement. <coughs> Almighty God, grant to this council wisdom, un understanding and sincerity of purpose for the good governance of this city. Amen. Amen. And I wish to acknowledge your traditional owners on the land in which we stand and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging and those that are with us tonight. Um, thank you. Please be seated. Um, moving on to item two, there are no apologies this evening. Um, item three, confirmation of minutes. So can we get someone to move that the minutes of the scheduled meeting of council held on the 1st of July 2024 be confirmed? Councillor Jelly, can we get a seconder? Councillor Paspaliaris. Um, <clears throat> anyone wish to speak? Put the motion to the vote. All those in favour, passed unanimously. Um, Item four, declarations of conflicts of interest. Does anyone have any conflicts they want to declare this evening? Very good. And we'll move on to item five, the mayoral presentation. Um, it's been a really big month for council. Um, it was really good at the start of the month to get down to ELGA, the Australian Local Government Association's um, <coughs> conference down in Canberra and we met with a whole heap of um, federal ministers and local members and I think it was a really valuable experience. I went, Councillor Jelly, the Deputy Mayor, um, Councillor Akoish and Councillor Paspaliaris. I think we really enjoyed the trip and got a lot out of it so that was really good. Um, we saw Wool Week at... Um, we saw Wool Week at uh, Flagstaff Hill and I'd like to just say a special thank you to Terry and Luke for all their blade shearing expertise and um, all the spinners showing us all the different wonderful and amazing things you can do with wool. Um, the Volunteers Expo was um, really great as well with more than 40 stall holders and they think over 200 through the door that day and thank you to everyone, not just our volunteers, but anyone looking to be a volunteer for doing what you do in our community because it's a really special, important part of what we offer here in Warrnambool. And one of the last things we got to just later on in the month was the story of the board. It started over 100 years ago, so the Pioneers Board down at History House. If you get a chance, go and check it out. Um, and thank you to the team at uh, Heritage House for getting all the restoration work done. Um, and also check out the book that was released as well that's on the board. I've read it and it's a fascinating read into early Warrnambool history. And some really interesting key players like Edward Vindler, who despite only being in Warrnambool for three years, was a really big part of the board. And um, Lillian Foyle for her work as a female artist and taking a lot of the photos on it. So if you get a chance, go down to History House and check it out. And if if you go to the History House website, you can actually get a copy of the book, um, The Story of the Board. It's actually a really insightful part of Warrnambool's history. Um, we'll move on to item six, public question time. Mr Mason, do we have any questions? Uh, Mayor, no, no public questions for tonight's meeting. Very good. And we'll move on to item seven, the reports. Um, and item 7.1, the revised 2024-2025 annual <coughs> budget, Mr Mason. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, as Council is obviously very aware, the 24-25 uh, budget um, was adopted by Council at the June meeting. Um, officers subsequently discovered that an administrative error had been made in that the uh, property valuation data was not correct because it had not been updated. Um, luckily, this error was discovered well before um, it's had any impact on community that the no rate notices have gone out. Um, despite the fact that there's been no impact, um, it was important for us to make sure that um, the, the budget was um, revised um, and has been up for um, some consultation and is uh, now uh, put before Council uh, with a recommendation that you adopt the revised budget. Thank you, Mr Mason. Were there any questions? Do we have a mover? Councillor Jelly? Thank you, Councillor Jelly. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Arnott. 
Um, Councillor Jelly, do you wish to speak? Uh, yes, look, um, as the CEO said, this was just, this was an administrative error and we have had to follow this process to adopt a revised budget to correct it in line with the Local Government Act. Thank you, Councillor Jelly. Councillor Arnott? I'll just further add to what Councillor Jelly and the CEO have re reiterated. Um, that there is no changes to the revenue or expenditure, so it does not have any impact on the ratepayers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Arnott. Does any other councillor wish to speak? Um, so I'd just like to add, just to be really clear, there is no increase to rates from this um, from the budget adoption. This was an administrative error from council officers. So there is no material change. It's just making sure the rate tables match the calculations that were in the budget. And because the budget is adopted through council resolution, that's why it needs to be amended through a resolution, which is what we're doing here now. Councillor Jelly, do you wish to um, add anything to close? All right, we'll put this motion to the vote. All those in favour? Passed unanimously. Um, so item 7.2, the procurement policy update. Mr Mason. Uh, the Local Government Act requires Council to have a procurement policy. Um, the existing policy has been uh, reviewed and updated um, and it is recommended that Council adopt uh, the new policy. This will obviously guide um, the numerous um, and different types of procurement that occur across the Council um, and gives clear direction to Council officers in conducting that procurement on Council's behalf. So the recommendation is before you. Thank you, Mr Mason. Are there any questions on this item? Can we have a mover? Councillor Arnott. Um, yes, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to move that the Council revoke the procurement policy adopted on 5th of October 2021 and two, that Council adopt the attached procurement policy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have a seconder? Councillor Ziegler. Um, Councillor Arnott, do you wish to speak? Yes, I will, thank you. Um, this is a... a policy, uh, it's key to good governance within the council. Um, there has been some recommendations through the audit of the policy, previous policy, and um, I think it's important that the procurement values and limits have been clearly defined and also there's been uh, notice that there's been support for local content principles. Um, providing acknowledgement of local tradespeople. Um, the financial delegation thresholds have been introduced into the um, policy, uh, which were previously in the procurement policy. And where the procurement of goods and services or works excel 300,000, a procurement management plan is required. Um, also, the introduction of an annual procurement plan which d will allow forward planning and engagement in reporting. There are some further changes in the policy and I've landed on just a few. Um, and this policy, as I said, it's about governments and <coughs> transparency and it helps with ef efficiency. So I'm happy to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Arnott. Councillor Ziegler. Yes, Mayor. Uh, basically, this is a, an, admin an administrative step. Uh, Council has to revoke the previous procurement policy in order to adopt the new one, but uh, officers are constantly trying to improve and update all of our policies, and this is just another one, just needs to be done to keep it in line with uh, aspects of procurement and probity. Thank you, Councillor Ziegler. Any other councillor wish to speak? Um, I'd just like to add that for me, one, one of the biggest additions is actually the um, the addition of a probity auditor to look over tenders um, when seen as appropriate. And also all tenders over $2 million now have to have this in order to have greater scrutiny about expenditure of public funds from Council. And as Councillor Arnott touched on, there is no change to the officer's delegated authority limits in this policy as it sits at the moment. It follows on from where we were previously. Councillor Arnott, do you wish to add anything to close? Um, no, I won't. Thank you, Mayor. Um, all right, we'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Passed unanimously. We'll now move on to item 7.3, the Pandemic Response Plan 2024. Mr Mason. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and given my croaky voice, this is probably a good one for me to introduce. 
Uh, Council um, had previously has had an influenza pandemic response plan. I guess a learning over COVID was um, that there are a variety of different pa pandemics that we need to plan for. So um, this plan has been um, updated and broadened um, and consultation has obviously occurred with the Department of Health and other um, relevant um, health stakeholders. And um, ho hopefully we never have to use it, but the plan will give guidance in, in the event of a further pandemic. Thank you, Mr Mason. Are there any questions on this? Do we have a mover? Councillor Taylor? I would like to move a motion that Council adopt the Council Pandemic Response Plan as per the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Mayor Blaine. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Do we have a second that? Councillor Paspelliaris. <coughs> Councillor Taylor. This uh, Wonderful City Council Pandemic Response Plan has been revised in response to an audit action identified by the Audit and Risk Committee as the previous version of the plan did not adequately address all the potential pandemics such as COVID-19. This plan enables to a consistent response to a pandemic outbreak and recovery across a region by providing assistance to all stakeholders to reduce the impact, prevent transmission and implement infection control of the pandemic. Thank you, Mayor Blaine. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Um, Councillor Paspelliaris, sorry. Um, thank you, Mayor. I might just add that the, um, there was a plan that was reviewed in 2021 um, and there was a previous version implemented in 2016. Um, I guess the main thing that's been mentioned is that the um, previous pandemic response plan didn't adequately address um, all potential pandemics. So it's basically a new framework and guidance for council um, and other stakeholders um, within the region to just plan for um, and effectively respond to um, such conditions in future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Paspelliaris. Does any other councillor wish to speak? Um, I'd just like to add too that after COVID, I do think it's important that this is reviewed and kept up to date and um, more guidance and being able to work. We saw what it was like working with our pandemic lead when working with Barwon Health um, for better outcomes and, you know, hopefully the more prepared we can be for what a future pandemic may look like, the better it will be for our region. Councillor Taylor, do you wish to add anything to close? No, thank you, Mayor Blaine. Um, we'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? passed unanimously. Uh, we'll now move on to item 7.4, the draft warnable car parking strategy. Mr Mason. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mayor. Car parking is obviously a, a really important issue for a growing regional city such as Warrnambool. Um, a draft car parking strategy has been developed and we're um, keen to um, hear from the community about um, the content of the draft strategy. Um, it's recommended that Council approve the release of the draft um, parking strategy for consultation um, and uh, a further report would be br brought back to Council um, following that consultation period. Thank you, Mr Mason. Were there any questions on this? <coughs> Do we have a mover? Councillor Ziegler. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Blaine. Uh, I move that the Council approves the release <coughs> of the draft warnable car parking strategy for consultation. Uh, do we have a seconder, Councillor Arnott? Uh, Councillor Ziegler. Yes, Mayor. Um, this is an important one. We're asking people to um, send in their submissions and opinions about something that affects every one of us. Uh, it's something that um, Council needs to tailor its responses according to the submissions that are received from people. Everybody has an opinion about parking uh, and that's right through uh, the CBD, the whole town and problem areas like the main street and the, and the hospital area. So we need to hear uh, opinions and legitimate su submissions about the parking issues so that we can get the parking policies right. Thank you, Councillor Ziegler. Councillor Arnott. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, this is a, a, a really interesting document that's been put before us. It is an in-depth look at the Warrnambool City count, uh, car parking um, areas. Um, there are some new and innovative ideas put forward and I would like to ask the community to get on board, to get on to your say, have a look in the local paper. We do value the community's input and as this is an important document, I ask everyone to get on board and have, it, have their opinion and get it to us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Arna. Any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Paspeliaris. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, well, this um, draft strategy has um, been a long time coming and I think that um, as far as the suggestions within this plan are concerned, it is sort of a, a broad look at everything. I think what Council is looking for is people's um, experiences, their sort of um, uh, their information, more detail around some of the aspects of this um, draft plan. Um, and we're looking to, um, I guess, um, hone in on um, maybe I think the three areas that were noted that have a higher usage, um, potentially higher issues um, as far as the railway, um, CBD and hospital precincts that were identified. Um, I think it's also important to understand that the consultants um, doing their best within a limited um, observational time frame, so three and a half days worth of observations um, in certain areas of Warrnambool can only produce certain um, uh, data. So I think it's really important for the community to come out and respond, um, you know, um, across the board in terms of what they um, feel are really important issues with parking. So that's really where we're, go where we're going to get the um, greater detail on uh, what is working, what doesn't work, and um, how things can be um, improved. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Paspeliaris. Any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Mayor Blaine. <coughs> I'd like to uh, compliment previous uh, councils and staff officers on the uh, resounding success of the Liebig Street renewal in 2017. Beautification of Liebig Street has been outstanding and it has slowed traffic down along Liebig Street, given pedestrians far more safety and the removal of the plane trees replaced with the ornamental pear trees has been magnificent. I believe parking fees and fines should remain unchanged in the CBD while we still have over 2,500 free car parks outside the CBD in the east, north and west shopping centres. One notable absentee from this car parking strategy is the omission of providing more car parking at Worm Bay. This area has now become a very highly sought after beach access which regularly becomes overcrowded with vehicles seeking a car park. Considerable amount of car parks are taken up by campers who have more than one car in Surfside 2 and they conveniently use Worm Bay car parks with no car park restrictions. If the inner circle jungle was cleared at Worm Bay, it would solve a lot of these problems. On top of these suggestions, I am happy to see the Warrnambool car parking draft strategy be released for public comment within the community. Thank you, Mayor Blaine. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Any other councillor <laughs> wish to speak? Um, <coughs> I'd like to add that, yes, parking, it is a huge issue and the way to get a strategy that will actually fit with all the different precincts around our city is a challenge and we do have some challenging areas, whether it is the hospital area and whether it us is some that wasn't included, like the Worm Bay car park. But please, um, it's going into <coughs> consultation. Give your feedback to shape where this strategy looks and how we can better serve you know, with parking throughout our municipality. There are some innovative ideas in this strategy, but are they the right fit for Warrnambool? That's the feedback that will really help guide what it's actually going to um, look like. Council Ziegler, do you wish to add anything to close? Yes, I will say a few things. It's, um, it's probably something that 
we all quietly acknowledge is that uh, a lot of Warrnambool people don't like to walk to where they're going. They prefer to park right in front. It's not the council's job to tell them they, they can't do that. That would be far too paternalistic. But so much can still change, and we've proved that by that resounding success of the first hour free in the off-street car parks. I personally, um, having heard Councillor Taylor's uh, suggestion about Worm Bay, like to put forward that um, I'd like to see more of the first hour free elsewhere in the CBD as well. So that'd be my personal uh, put forward, but um, certainly so much can still change to improve parking and we need to hear what the public want. Thank you, Councillor Ziegler. Now we'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour, passed unanimously. Um, we'll now move on to item 7.5, the Domestic Animal Management Plan Review 2024. Mr Mason. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is largely an administrative issue. Um, Council is required to do an annual review of its Domestic Animal Management Plan. Um, this review has been uh, conducted. Uh, resulting in some minor changes, uh, and it's recommended that Council endorse the reviewed uh, plan. Thank you, Mr Mason. Are there any questions? Can we have a mover? Councillor Ziegler. Yes, uh, Mayor Blaine, I'll move that the Council endorses the review of the Domestic Animal Management Plan 2024. Thank you, um, Councillor Ziegler. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Paspaliaris. Councillor Ziegler. No, thank you. Uh, nothing to say about that. I think it's basically an administrative issue. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Paspaliaris? Um, I'd just add that um, obviously these sorts of reviews, especially for um, an important um, issue with domestic animal management, just needs to be um, reviewed um, regularly. Um, I think also with there being um, an increase in pet ownership um, I think during and since COVID, um, it's really just a, um, a big focus um, in terms of keeping um, owners responsible, um, managing um, domestic animals and just ensuring that things, um, you know, are handled in the best way possible. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Paspaliaris. Any other councillor? Councillor Arna. Yes, um, thank you. I am also a pet owner and I found some of the statistics in our um, domestic animal management plan quite quite inter interesting and some of the things that were highlighted for me was the pet o ownership and education and our local law staff do a great job. They work diligently um, within the community around the education and compliance with pet ownership and there was something very interesting I found within some of that data that we actually had 45 dog attacks this year. Um, 146 dogs were at, at large complaints, as well as 364 nuisance complaints. Now, this all ties in with the education and the responsibility of owning a pet. So I know this management plan is just basically an update, but it's worth remembering some of those statistics. So thank, thank you, Thank you, Councillor Arnott. Do we have any other councillors that wish to speak? Um, I'd just like to add to it is actually you look at some of the numbers in there. We've got over 6,000 um, animals, sorry, cats mm. and dogs registered in our municipality. And as Councillor Arnott um, pointed out, dog attacks are on the rise. So it is partly in education. And mm. just for owners, make sure that you are controlling, um, are controlling your animals. Um, and one thing I would like to point out as well is our low euthanasia rate will continue, especially with the Warrnambool City Council taking over the um, taking over the um, operation of the animal shelter. Um, and it's important enforcement um, is kept up from the organisation, our local laws, to make sure that everyone's safe with all of our animals getting around and all our animals are safe as well. Councillor Ziegler, do you wish to add anything to close? No, thank you, Mayor Villain. Um Very good. We'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Passed unanimously. We now move on to item 7.6, the council substitute for the MAV State Council meeting. Uh, Mayor, as you have advised, you're um, unable to um, attend the next MAV State Council meeting um, due to another commitment. Um, it's therefore recommended that the Deputy Mayor, um, Councillor Jelly, be appointed um, as uh, council's representative at the next meeting. 
or substitute. Um, were there any questions <coughs> on that? Do we have a mover? Councillor Arnott. I'll move that the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Vicky Jelly AM, be appointed as the Council Substitute Representative on the Municipal Association of Victoria. Um, thank you, Councillor Arnott. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Taylor. Councillor Arnott. Oh, I don't wish to speak. <laughs> I think it's pretty self-explanatory. And Councillor Taylor. Uh, the Municipal Asso Association of Victoria conducts State Council meetings twice a year and the next meeting is scheduled for Friday the 23rd of August 2024, which our Mayor is unable to attend. Therefore, it is necessary for Council to appoint a substitute representative in Councillor Vicky Jolly AM. Thank you, Mayor Blaine. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Any other councillor wish to speak? Um, the reason to, um, that this needs a resolution is because um, to appoint a substitute, it should be done when we, can, when we do all the committees and just because I haven't been able to make it, that's where this has come to light. So in future, when we do the committee appointments normally in December, there will be a substitute for the MAV in case the Mayor or whoever the delegate is at that point in time can't um, make it. Um, do you wish to close, um, Councillor Arnott? No, we'll put you. the motion to the vote. All those in favour, passed unanimously. Um, we will now move on to item 7.7, .7, the Festivals and Grants Partnership Program. Mr Mason. Thank you. Um, the Festival and Events Grant Funding Program is an important way for Council to support um, a number of different uh, festivals and events. Um, we know that festivals and events are a really important way um, of bringing uh, people to our wonderful city um, and ensuring that the city is vibrant um, and offers um, a range of different activities and, and um, things for people to do. Um, so um, staff have worked uh, through the, um, the event, uh, assessing all the festivals and event grants that are applications that have been received. Um, <coughs> and it's recommended that council um, award ne nearly $200,000 uh, to 25 eligible um, events um, under the program. And the recommendation is before you in two parts. Thank you, Mr Mason. Were there any questions? Do we have a mover? Councillor Arnott. Um, I'd like to move that Council approves the allocation of $194,592 to be allocated to the 25 eligible events under the Festivals and Events Grants and Partnerships Program 2024-2025 program and two, request that all applicants be advised of the outcome of the assessment process and the council guidelines associated with the grant. Thank you, Councillor Arnott. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Paspaliaris, Councillor Arnott. Yes, thank you. Um, we had uh, actually 35 applicants for this um, program. Uh, 10 were ineligible due to not meeting the funding criteria. So 15 of those applicants are recommended to be fully funded and 10 partially funded. And um, of the 25 applicants, there were six that had not been funded previously. Um, this is a really important program. This does help create a really vibrant um, calendar of events in Warrnambool. Um, they're, they're helping to create new events and iconic events, hopefully, for Warrnambool, which will in turn drive some tourism visitation, especially in our off-peak times, um, stimulate the economy, and hopefully cre create memorable um, visits and experiences that are unique to Warrnambool and will encourage people to return to Warrnambool. Um, we also support these events um, with the hope that down the track some of these events will become self-funded and sustainable and uh, for the future. So I'm very happy to endorse this program. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Arnott. Councillor Paspeliaris. Um, I think Councillor Arnott's done a good job of summarising everything, but I'd just add that the, um, the assessment process is managed through the Smarty Grant system. So there are some um, very transparent and equitable guidelines um, within the process. So this is, um, I'm familiar with the program actually myself, but 
um, it's really a, um, a good mechanism for um, ensuring that funding is allocated across a variety of um, streams. Um, I think probably one thing for um, both the community and perhaps council to um, look at developing further is just that there weren't um, any um, applications for the business events stream or events acquisition stream. So I think that is probably something that um, can be um, possibly a focus in future. So um, we want not only, um, you know, the, um, you know, arts and um, sports and those sorts of events, but also, um, you know, looking at business events and those sorts of things can um, drive visitation um, to, the t to the city as well. Um, so I, yeah, I think that the fact that over two thirds of the um, applications were funded is um, a really great outcome. But I think if we can sort of um, narrow in on a couple of things that um, we can improve on, I think that'd um, give a more well-rounded um, uh, uh, outcome and result. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Paspeliaris. Any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Ziegler. Yes, I think that um, in general terms, the, uh, uh, the, the monies have gone to extremely worthwhile um, recipients or will go to them, recipients. I do have uh, one misgiving um, that uh, partially funded f uh, from beer to their function, I think. Um, I, I don't like that at all from the point of view that this is uh, funding the activities of a private company. Uh, the profit from this, if this uh, activity is successful, will go back to that company, not to the community. I, didn't, I don't think that they are, our community f funds should be spent that way at all. Um, and this council, has, as a matter of fact, has had strong discussions about this sort of thing, about helping private companies do various things. Um, particularly in the light of the, the community groups, some community groups have put in applications and have missed out and the uh, community would have uh, benefited in fundraising and activities <coughs> just the same. Um, so I'm not completely happy about the inclusion of that particular private company for that activity, but given that the, uh, the rest of the uh, community events have been supported and are quite worthy, I don't see any other uh, action on my behalf but to, to, to support the motion. I, I just think that that's uh, wrong that we're supporting a private company. Thank you, Councillor Ziegler. Any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Jelly. Um, as everyone said, there's some great um, groups um, for festivals, events and partnership programs in here, F Project, Gunditjmara, Broyers Guild, Multicultural Association, Warrnambool Citizens, Melbourne Warrnambool Road Race, all those things, some, some great events there. Um, there was total funding of 200,000, we're putting out 194,592 and I think that's great use of the money. And the community will definitely um, benefit groups and everyone will benefit very uh, well from this, this program, so uh, it's great to see. Thank you, Councillor Jelly. Any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Koish. Thank you, Maya. Um, it is vital to uh, support the community through activities. Uh, the, the, the only concern I have is when um, the council funded uh, private entity to, um, to do some activity that people can come and uh, and, and have sometimes uh, will council have like financially in a position to fund uh, private businesses that can uh, invite community into that business or into that activities this is I think the, the, the concern I have but uh, it is good to, to, to support the community with the activities thank you thank you councillor Kush any other councillor wish to speak councillor Taylor Thank you, uh, Mayor Blaine. I see this as a helpful and financial partnership program 
endorsement to support events which contribute to the local economy and build the profile of Warrnambool as a vibrant and a desired place to visit in regional Victoria. Thank you, Mayor Blaine. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Um, I'd just like to add, I actually think this is really great to see Council supporting so many different groups and organisations that are drawing visitors um, to our city and to our region. Um, I do disagree with a couple of my councillors um, who have singled out well, one event in particular because there is way more applicants that are for profit on that list than just them. And from what we'd been briefed, especially when we asked about what the event's actually for, it's actually for promotion for a group of events. And um, it should be a really good draw card um, for the city. It is good to see this money going back into, and this is something we're seeing as well, it's the money going back into local community and local organisations. And with cost ex escalation, many events would struggle to go ahead without support. So I'm excited to see that this is how many events, you know, we're helping to support with our council. It's um, really good to see. And I think the um, breadth and differences of all the different organisations that have put forward and have been selected for funding is a real credit to council in what they do and um, what they're trying to bring to our city. Councillor Arnott, do you wish to add anything to close? Um. Yes, I, I will. I would just like to address also the fellow councillors how they've disagreed with one event in particular. This event is classed as a destination event. It doesn't just involve one business. Um, and you should be reassured that there is a strict criteria process and uh, this is overseen st stringently by the team, so I have no problem at all in supporting this event. Thank you. It is a part of the procurement as well. There will be a full acquittal for every single event. Um, sorry, Councillor Arnott. No, take that's your all thing. I wish to say. Thank you. <laughs> um, we will now put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Um, passed unanimously. Um, we'll now move on to item 7.8, the Community Development Fund 2024-25. <coughs> Mr Mason. Uh, thank you, Mayor. The Community Development Fund provides um, really important funding to community groups um, operating in Warrnambool. The groups uh, contribute to the incredible um, vibrancy and, um, of the city um, and it's recommended that uh, $90,000 be allocated uh, to 21 eligible um, organisations and in, in many cases um, the, the, these um, community groups can't, can't do the sort of things that they're doing without this, this funding. So yeah, the recommendation is before you. Thank you, Mr Mason. It's actually 22. One sorry, 22. Funding. OK. Sorry. Um, do we have any questions? Councillor Jelly? Actually, I do. Um, this time, just going through it. What's... Um, there's a, a total um, funding pool of $196,000 there. Yep. What's going to happen with the leftover $105,208 in funds that hasn't been allocated to this funding round? Yeah, Mason. Uh, through you, it's a, it's a good question, one that we've obviously discussed. Um, we would be planning on having a further discussion with councils around that. Um, I think our recommendation wouldn't be to do another round of funding, but would be to allocate that money to a, um, a, 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 a pro program or project um, which is yet to be defined, but we've got some ideas that we would be bringing back to council. Okay. Um, thank you. Any other questions? Um, do we have a mover? Councillor Jelly? Yes, Mayor. Um, well, after my question and the response from the CEO, that's fine, I um, get that, but I would like to add to the motion and change the motion to, or add it to it, so that, number one, um, that Council approve funding of $9,792 to 22 community clubs and organisations under the Community Development Fund 2024-25 program. Two, request that all applicants be advised of the outcome of the assessment process and where applicable Council guidelines associated with the grant. And I'd like to add three, 
Alec paid the full amount left over, so the $105,208 funding from this round to a future community development fund round. So just to clarify, Councillor Jelly, you're adding a third point there to say that the leftover funding will go into a future community development fund round. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Which so, gives us the... Yeah, mm -hmm. so that'll go into a future funding round. That's the change. Um, do we have yeah, a second? Can I, can I just clarify yeah. just yeah. for a second? Yeah, sorry. No, 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 that's fine. So a future development fund, community development fund round could be rolled over to next year. It doesn't actually have yeah. to be this year. It yeah, no, no, it's when fund. the when the fund comes back up. Yeah. So instead of it having the 195, I think it is, it'll have the extra 105 yeah. on That's top. Fine. So it could yeah. be 300. Sorry, Richard. I'll second the motion. Oh, yep, you'll the second that. Yep. Second the alternative motion. Yep, cool. Um, Councillor Jelly. Right. Yes, OK. So thank you. Clarify. I just want to add that in. So it goes back into the community development fund so that these um, these groups can come back to us again, that it doesn't get put into something else, mm -hmm. that this it goes back into this sort of thing. That's why I've added that on. We have a great result with this fund. Um, it's a, we're, we're able to support so many eligible local clubs and organisations um, and there's some just excellent recipients of different groups and clubs that can um, apply for up to $5,000. Some of them being this, this time, the Warrnambool and District Artists Society, the Warrnambool and District Historical Society, Beach Patrol, Warrnambool Coast Care Landmark, Land Care Network, Little Athletics, Swimming Club, Yacht Club, West Coast Bodyboarding Club. So there's a variety of groups that can apply for this, which will help, help them know in. And that's why I felt it's important to have that money that's left over from this one put into the next one, so there might be more money to distribute within the community. Thank you, Councillor Jelly. Councillor Ziegler. Yes, um, I'll, I'll endorse uh, Councillor Jelly's remarks. I think that uh, there are so many of these kind of groups that uh, benefited in the past, and I, I can't see um, that that money that's left over uh, just being put somewhere else in, in general revenue or something. I think it needs to be used in a similar fashion in the future, because uh, I think it's incredibly uh, valuable for these groups. But I would make the remark that the, the groups that are putting in submissions looking for help in this, in this way need to address the criteria perfectly so that their submissions are looked at seriously and they're not missed out. I know that several of the groups that made application this year were um, looked over and refused on the basis of their submissions not being answered as they were supposed to have been. Thank you, Councillor Ziegler. Any other councillor wish to speak? <coughs> councillor Arnott. Um, yes, thank you, Councillor Jelly, for making that um, extra line to the uh, recommendation. I do fully endorse that. Um, it does give Councillor a greater ability to help more in the community. Um, and we must remember that a lot of these small clubs and organisations, they're mainly ran by volunteers. And um, so any way that we can help them you know, it's often difficult for them to raise funds. Um, they have to do it all, like I said, rely on volunteers. And they do create such a, an important role in the community. So I think this is a very worthwhile cause. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Arnott. Any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Paspelliaris. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I think that there's a nice um, spread of um, uh, recipients over the three categories of um, sport and recreation, culture and arts, environment and sustainability. Um, I also do think, um, I tend to agree with Councillor Jelly's um, motion um, because I do think that it just gives council the ability to be very distinct in um, what they give next time and so we're able to then give more um, at during a subsequent um, funding round. 
And the fact that, you know, um, up to $5,000 can do a lot for some of these small groups, um, I think is really an important point. Um, the fact that Councillor Arnott mentioned about um, most clubs are run by volunteers, um, small groups are run the same. It also then lends itself to what Councillor Ziegler said in terms of the applications. So, you know, they have limited time and sometimes expertise in these sort of funding applications. So I think perhaps that's somewhere, that's where that comes from at times. Um, so it, it still doesn't, um, it shouldn't really deter anyone from applying, but it, as you rightly said, it's about sort of um, encouraging people to be more thorough and, um, you know, being very um, detailed in, in their applications. So um, I think possibly that is partly some reason. Um, but I think it's got a really nice, as I said, spread of um, recipients this year. So I'd be happy to um, support the motion. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Paspaliaris. Any other councillor wish to speak? Um, I'd like to add to it, it is great to see 22 clubs. There's a huge diversity of different organisations that do a range of um, things. And I understand where Councillor Jelly's coming from. Um, the Community Development Fund is there to go back to community, not in the council projects. And I think it is important that um, it does go back to community. And it's probably something that if we are finding there, there's extra funds there, we could nearly review limits as well on how much we actually give with the guidelines to the policy or something a future council could decide as well. Um, and I'd like to just say thank you to everyone that actually did put in an application. It was great. It's been great to see them all. And, um, you know, if you are stuck or want to apply for any of these, don't be afraid to reach out to um, council staff who are more than happy to help um, organisations, you know, get some funding to help get them through because for a lot of these organisations, it's some of the big money that keeps them going. Councillor Jelly, do you wish to add anything to close? Um, thanks for the input from everyone. I think it's important. It is called a community development, de development fund for that reason. And I think that is why it is important for the money to stay in this part, this um, section for us to re-look at it. And that's a, another good idea to have it reviewed. There could be a um, put uh, the the amount that can be applied for up in years to come. Other council can look at that. Um, but I think it's a very important fund. Some other things we've had to change with, with funds that we've had previously that we've had to take down. So I think this is a good opportunity. So I think we need to <coughs> the amount of money we really can in there and that, that need to be rolled over. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jelly. We now put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Passed unanimously. We'll now move on to item 7.9, <coughs> development plan application for 71 Raglan Parade. Mr Mason. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, a development plan has been lodged for 71 Raglan Parade, which uh, supports the future residential uh, development of this land. Uh, no objections have been lodged uh, and Council's planning officers have worked diligently with the applicant to, to get a layout um, that is satisfactory. Um, and it's recommended that Council approve uh, the development plan. Uh, there's a, a, a recommendation uh, set out before you on page 34. Thank you, Mr Mason. Are there any questions? Do we have a mover? Councillor Jelly. Uh, yes, Mayor. I will move the, count of the um, officer's recommendation that um, having considered all matters normally required under section 60 of the Act of Planning Application, Council approve the development plan under the relevant provisions of the Warrigal Planning Scheme in respect of the land described as Lot 2 on LP 205354, known as 71 Raglan Parade, Warrnambool, Victoria 3280, which seeks to facilitate future residential development on the site. Thank you, Councillor Jelly. Do we have a second? Councillor Arnott. Councillor Jelly. Uh, yes, this um, has come to us. Um, it was originally, the application was received by Council on uh, February 2024 and after some public exhibition and the plan was amended, so resubmitted back in May, which was good. Um, 43 residential lots, no objections, as the CEO has said. Um, I think it's a, um, an area that has sat there for a while. There's, there's some 
um, um, other um, uh, building that's gone on in front of there, um, in the eastern area there over uh, the last couple of years. I think it will open up um, a good area for housing, a bit of variety of housing in there. Um, so um, I think it's a, um, a relevant plan to put forward. Thank you, Councillor Jelly. Councillor Arna. Um, yes, thank you, Mayor. As Councillor Jelly has said, we've got a 43-lot subdivision um, before us. Um, we've got some standard and medium-sized density um, in the eastern part of the development. I think this is a, a good way to move forward. There's no doubt we need housing stock in Warrnambool, so I am happy to support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Arnott. Any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Paspaliaris. Um, I think that the um, number of um, lot sizes um, seems reasonable. Um, there's a 300 to 400 square metre um, indication for each lot. Um, I also think that the plan um, just allows for things to develop and change potentially around it in future. So I think the officers um, and applicant, um, from what I've heard, have really done well to um, examine and then come to a, a, a plan where there'll be, um, yeah, possibly an allowance for um, a good design going forward. So it doesn't um, obstruct or not allow um, other um, good designs to occur from it in future. So I feel comfortable um, with that main aspect. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Paspaliaris. Any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Kush. Thank you, Maya. Um, I think this is one of the few uh, planning development come to us without any objection. And, and this made us uh, much easier to, to decide upon it. And as one of all is uh, in dire need of accommodation and, and, and housing. <laughs> I think 42, uh, 43 lots will help a lot in um, hosting and accommodating people here. So I think this is uh, good to go ahead and we support it. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kush. Any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Taylor. Thank you, um, Mayor Blaine. Concerns with the original application have been rectified in as much as it was originally the applicant's intent only to de describe the eastern portion of the land as the western portion is in a separate ownership where it is understood that development in short term is not being pursued. However, um, an important purpose of the development plan is to ensure cohesive planning of the entire area that connectivity and interaction is promoted. Thank you, Mayor Blaine. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Ziegler. Yes, Mayor. Um, so many of the other developments that we've been confronted with uh, have stimulated several uh, objections with uh, impositions on amenity for neighbours. In this case, that hasn't happened. Uh, so I think that um, this is one where we can actually get some benefit of extra housing for the town without disturbing too many of the neighbours. Thank you, Councillor Ziegler. Um, I'd just like to add to this, so we're at development plan stage at this point in time. We've still got to go through building permit stage where there is a lot more detail and it's a lot um, more work through, but it looks like a good design that is factoring in the future growth of the area. And I'm happy to see, I'm really happy to see that we've got um, someone wanting to invest and um, residential developments, you know, growing in East Warrnambool. It's a really um, important part of our city. Councillor Jelly, do you wish to add anything to close? Um, just yes. Look, it's already within the general <coughs> residential zone, so there's no changing of zones or anything like that. I think it's a nice little pocket tucked away in there um, that will suit many people out in that area and it's using, well it's not infill but it's it's sort of tucked in behind there and there is, um, who knows what will happen in future years, years with adjoining land um, but the plan I thought was good, they've amended it, they've listened um, so I um, support it. Thank you Councillor Jelly, we now put the motion to the vote, all those in favour 
passed unanimously. Now move on to item 710, advisory <coughs> committee reports, Mr Mason. Uh, very simple, Mayor. There are um, a number of advisory committee uh, reports to be committed, uh, to be received as we do every month. Thank you, Mr Mason. Any questions? Do we have a mover? Councillor Taylor. I would like to move a motion. The records of the planning advisory committee held on the 12th of June 2024 and the Community and International Relations Advisory Committee held on the 18th of June 2024 be received. Thank you, Mayor Blaine. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Arnott. Councillor Taylor, do you wish to add anything? No, thank you, Mayor Blaine. Councillor Arnott. No, no other councillors? We'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Passed unanimously. Now move on to item 7.11, the Cycling Reference Group Minutes from the 12th of June 2024. Mr Mason. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is um, a, a normal reference group meeting um, and it's to be adopted, but also endorse, asking that councils endorse the work plan um, that has been developed by the uh, reference, Cycling Reference Group which will guide our future projects and activities of the group. So um, a two-part recommendation before you. Thank you, Mr Mason. Any questions? Do we have a mover? Councillor Paspelliaris. Um, thank you, Mayor. I will move that one, the records of the Cycling <coughs> Reference Group meeting held on 24th April 2024 be received and that Council endorses the work plan established by the group and proceeds with its objectives and deliverables as outlined. Thank you, Councillor Paspelliaris. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Ziegler. Councillor Paspelliaris. Um, thank you, Mayor. I'd just like to um, firstly say that the committee has got a great group of um, individuals, really highly motivated, very passionate about um, cycling, um, all aspects, so recreational, competitive, um, you know, incidental, um, as in riding to work, et cetera. Um, and I think that um, they're really motivated to advocate um, for their ideas um, around cycling um, in the city. Um, the work plan basically is just um, a way in which they were, the group was able to better define um, some desirable projects. Um, so there were some really small um, kind of really doable things um, and then there were some bigger picture type ideas. So um, all of which will, I guess, come along in time um, depending on funding um, and other opportunities. And of course, one of the main um, focuses the group has um, always is on key safety issues. So there's a lot of discussion around um, how to make certain areas um, safer, certain streets and roads safer, well, and cert certain treatments um, also safer. Oh, um, so basically what um, I'd also like to say is we lost Nicole, who was um, the council officer in the meetings, um, but Sean has been um, an excellent addition um, uh, so far, so thank you. Um, sorry, Councillor Paspelliaris. I just wanted to ask if it was all right. There's a correction in the motion. Oh, yes, yep. Um, if we could change it from the 24th of April 2024 to the 12th of June 2024. Oh, sorry, yes, okay, yes, yes. sure. It, it, was, sure. it was an error in the recommendation. Yes. So are you happy and sorry, um, Councillor Siegel, yes. you're happy to yep. accept Yeah, so we'll that. change the date to 12th of June. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep, everyone's sorry, happy with that. Sorry, Councillor Ziegler. Yeah, um, I just endorse uh, what Councillor Pespaliaris has, has mentioned, the key infrastructure projects that have been uh, discussed in the, uh, in the cycling reference group, like the off-road circuit track and e-bike uh, charging stations there, exciting developments for the future. I think that this is great, good stuff. Thank you, Councillor Ziegler. Any other councillor wish to speak? Um, I'd just like to add, it is great to see there is a works plan and um, keeping, in, keeping cyclists in front of mind and continuing to progress projects like the off-road circuit and the Deacon Link. It's actually really good to see and hopefully something we can achieve into the future. Councillor Paspelliaris, do you wish to add anything to close? No, thanks. We'll now put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? 
passed unanimously. Thank you. We'll now move on to item 712, informal meeting of council reports. Mr Mason. Uh, through you, Mayor, again, a standard report. So there's four records of um, uh, the informal meetings to be, um, to be received. Thank you. Any questions? Do we have a mover? Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Mayor Blaine. I'd like to move that the record of the informal meetings held of council on the 8th, 15th, 22nd and 29th of July 2024 be received as per the uh, councillor's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Arnott. Councillor Taylor, do you wish to add anything? No, thank you, Mayor Blaine. Councillor Arnott. <coughs> no other councillors. We'll now put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Passed unanimously. Item 713, Mayoral and Chief Executive Officer Council Activity Summary Report. Mr Mason. Uh, again, a, a standard report, and I think you've referred to a, a fair few of these activities <laughs> in your Mayoral's report, so the report is there for you to, for Council to receive. Um, Thank you, Mr Mason. Any questions? Do we have a mover? Councillor Arnott. <coughs> Um, I'd like to move that the Mayoral and Chief Executive Officer Council activity, Activities Summary Report be received. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Arnott. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Paspaliaris. Councillor Arnott. No, thank you. Councillor Paspaliaris. No, thank you. No other councillors. We'll now put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Passed unanimously. Um, item 8, notices of motion. There are no notices of motion that have been received. Um, item 9, general business. Did councillors have anything to raise for general business this month? No. Um, item 10, urgent business, Mr Mason. No, no, no items of urgent business. Um, thank you everyone for coming this evening and we'll see you all in September next month. That's the close of the meeting.